strength. <laughs> Make no mistake, it is a blessing that we live in such a comfortable and advanced world. But the downside to that is kids are born into a world and expect it to be easy. And when things aren't easy, they get mad and they complain. But make no mistake, they have it wrong because life's hard no matter what. And you should just be thankful for the easy moments. Yeah, because guess what? The truth is, and this is what it is, there's 9 billion people in this world. It's not going to be easy for everybody. No. As a matter of fact, it's going to be harder for most. And guess who? And I hate to say it, but it's only going to be easy if you're white. <laughs> Wei Song Xian. <laughs> right off the bat, we are ping-ponging Wei Song Xian yeah. right at you. That might be the quickest Wei Song Xian in History Ahina's podcast history. Because that I... was like Ronda Rousey's eight-second knockout. Yes! <laughs> that was a record-breaking Wei Song Xian. Speaking of white... Today, Chrissy Cackles is now Chrissy J. Crew because yeah. he's dressed white. I look like a smoke sausage for a bounty toilet paper. Because paper your towel. shirt does not match your Guido head. Yeah, because when I went into the store, because I was with the great Sal Volcano this weekend doing shows in Columbus, Chicago, and um, and uh, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, and we went shopping in Columbus, they had great stores there in Columbus, and I got a shirt that I normally wouldn't get because I'm the kind of kid I get my button downs from H and M or Target, and I got a nice shirt that was eighty five dollars, wow. and it just feels good. It's a different thing, but I have to tell you, in mid America, in the mid, the middle of our country, I could just say collectively has got a lower IQ than the East Coast. <laughs> it's just a fact, and it's what it, it is. is. What I it think is. the higher IQs are on the coast, and the lower ones are in the middle of the country, because a few of you people, I would say a few thousand of you people, are Franks and Bigs. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, you don't see a lot of people walking around because it's all suburban, but, yes. when, but when you do see people, you really see them because they're hard to miss because they're fucking fat. Fat. <laughs> yeah. You, here's the thing. Because at Salvacano okay. shows, yes. and Practical Jokers fans, can we just be honest? Let's just be, that's why we're on the history hyenas because it's <laughs> it's part history, more hyena. Wild! Do you think he picks venues that he knows has concrete floors just in case? Yeah! To make sure the venue stays intact! <laughs> that's what it is! It also has to have handicap wheelchair accessibility! And there better be a Denny's within walking distance! Because <laughs> there's a lot of scooters that are in the front row! Yes, and they're, it's beautiful. It's seriously, it's actually truly like a beautiful thing to see like what Impractical Jokers and Sal's comedy has done for people because it really makes people feel better about their lives. It's actually truly beautiful, but there's a, there's a lot of people that when we were there, they traveled from Columbus to Chicago to Wisconsin, and it's a nice thing, but it's one of those things where Sal is such a nice guy that he will be murdered by one of his fans. It's going to happen. And it's just what it is. Yeah. One day he's going to come home and his wife's going to be like, hi, Sal, and it's just going to be a fan with Sal's face on him because he murdered and skinned Sal because Sal's such a nice Nice guy, uh, and it's just the fans. I mean, if you're traveling, if you're a grown adult traveling from city to city to city to see another grown adult do comedy, it's just a little weird. <laughs> it is what it is. So truly it makes me laugh really hard. Yeah. Off stage. Sal Volcano when is we're like, hanging out, yeah. He fucking cracks me up. He's one of the guys. He's that, such a funny kid. If you ever get a chance to like get in a room with Sal for an hour, you will not stop laughing because of how committed he is to his bits. Yeah. And how Sal's the kind of guy, like he actually reads, like how we take time, we'll be on the toilet, you know, we'll read, you know, useless shit, meaningless shit on Instagram or whatever. Sal reads actual consumer reports for different products. So Sal funny. can tell you in yeah. depth what the best scissor is to get. Yeah. And it's he, unbelievable. And he got us a 
uh, he got us presents. He both got us Playboy got us necklaces. Beautiful, which is great. Great, and, thoughtful kid. Yeah, we we love them. We wear them sometimes. Sal got me. There's this new underwear that's out. It's called Tommy John underwear. Oh yeah, everyone loves that shit. It's thirty five dollars a pair. Sal yeah. bought me a pair. Just he said on me. People go crazy over that Tommy John. Are they he comfortable? Says, it really holds your peace. Nice, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sneak up on you. Doesn't ride up on you. Yeah. If you're a heavy kid. Now what about you? What about like you? Mike Mush is joining us again today. We Mike. got Mike Mush. We got James the Jew or Hispanic Matern. Yeah, and of course Wei Song Xian. We got Jihadi with a body. Zach. ISIS. Yeah. We got a full fucking house of. Guys, yeah. of course. And there's, there's going to be a fucking rockin' hot podcast after this with the funniest people around. Mike, Mike Suarez. Uh, Liz from the Comedy Cellar. No, I'm doing Bobby's podcast. <laughs> you know what, dude, right? You're the, yeah, 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 it's a guest. So if you want, it's going to be a fucking wild podcast yeah. right here on Riotcast. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the photographer chick, what's her name? What's the photographer chick's name? Becky. Becky. And Becky. Becky. And Becky. Becky. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all Riotcast shit. So Mikey's in here now. Yeah. And it's going to be dope. And then, yeah, dog's here with you. Dog, how, did your glue gun get any work this weekend no, or what? It took the weekend did, off. Anybody get glued up? I had options, but I was, I've been fighting a cold. Yeah. So I, I just I, I went home, man. Hey, do you just name your piece Elmer's? Because it's a glue gun? <laughs> I will going <laughs> forward. fucking yeah. Elmer's, baby. Now, James is one of the loudest. You have to. Have oh. you noticed how loud he is, or is it just me? James? Have you not... ever thought about Has it ever been something that's crushed your mind that he's loud? Or you, has, he, has it ever hit you? Or are you... F you saying you're you're a little Franks, but you're not Frank Sam. I'm not Frank Sam Beans. J J uh, let me say this quickly. Yes. James is such a joy in my life Thank and you. has been since 2008 that every time I see him, I just hear Christmas music playing in my Thank head. You. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just hearing fucking jingle bells because I'm happy. For, yeah. First of all, when he says that I'm loud, he's always screaming it. Yeah. So it's like, do you realize how loud you are? That's always what well, it is. Yeah. And we were at a comedy club the other day and it's loud. They're blasting music and a bunch of people are yenting about and I'm saying something yeah. excited. He's like, do you realize how loud you are? It's like, yeah, we're in a... But a you know what? Big you're room. built for entertainment and you're especially built for this era and radios and podcasts because your head is a made for headphones head. <laughs> the way your head comes it up really, to a point, it's, great. it's a one size fits all headphone head. Hey, and uh, yeah, I hate you and so much. you just feel like Why did I the come way back? you see it's how it's resting on the top top point of his head. Like you got to adjust because you got a little baby head. My head's no headphones fit because they're too big, so I just go headphoneless. But you're perfect. I got a good helmet. You can, you have to have that haircut for the rest of your life. Yeah, because if you grew hair, the, it would create. A, it, you would look like you have two heads. Yeah, it would just be too <laughs> much volume above your shoulders. Uh, yeah, and I'm a kid. I better keep my hair for a long time. You look. We when you Fred Flintstone out. Yeah, maybe you could grow your hair because your your body your body mat you're gonna be fucking big. Yeah, <laughs> and it's gonna get ugly. Yeah, well you're, and because right you the way you walk now you walk like you're lugging around something in a backpack. Yeah, and when you are really lugging something around, which is a lot of extra weight. Yeah, you're gonna leave the planet early. <laughs> you think I am? <laughs> Without a doubt, we have to get a hey Bert button. Ready? Here it is. Hey Bert. So you sample that. Hey Bert. So that we can, anytime Mad Dog's, Dog's in here and he speaks, just hit the hey Bert. Or anytime button. we talk about Dog, if we you know did something to neighbor and he can't yeah. be with us, hey Bert, hey Bert, yeah, oh hey Bert. <laughs> I hate so you. anyway, tell us about um. <laughs> what that asshole say? <laughs> Eight thirty-three. Cause it sounded like a chicken fart. Yeah, you stuck one out. You're gonna shit your pants. It's what it is. Yeah, you're gonna shit your pants. You keep doing that, man. Yeah. So we have a lot of funny comments. There's comments coming yeah. all over. People and have been letting us know that they are trying to recommend the podcast to friends. Yeah. And they have experienced some resistance. Some resistance. <laughs> and also, that's funny. And also, real quick, I want to say there's been a couple of people who have said that their Patreon hasn't updated since early November. And the reason is because you probably haven't paid your money. Happy Hanukkah. You know who you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, fuck it. He is just ready when you talk now. Yeah. James said when we came here, he said, what do you think? What are the chances you think uh, Chris is going to say something Racial. I said, have you been listening to our podcast? The but chances are 100 percent But it's a safe space to do it because our fans are wild and I there's there's no malice behind it. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I love all racist religions. I have kids from every fucking corner of the world. Every corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh so here we go. Oh Bubba's. Uh oh, Nicodemus <laughs> listen to this Greek name. Nicodemus Papadou 
Papadopoulos. Holy Papadopoulos. shit. Papadopoulos. That's fucking Greek. Nicodemus Papadopoulos. This guy's coming olive oil. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, that's his Greek. I mean, that kid. It can't get any Greeker than that. That kid has to have his eyebrows threaded every two days. <laughs> yeah. That kid, unfortunately, has to do what his father and mother tell him to do. 100%. This kid works at his dad's <laughs> business, whatever it's it is. Whatever business this guy, you can't do anything else. 100%. This kid travels with his family to events, and they're all through the church. Yes, 100%. That's and, what it is. Yeah, and he, the kind of girls he brings home have to be a little specific. Greek. <laughs> yeah. They have to be Greek. Yeah. Just like when Delilah brings home a guy, it's got to be specific. Yeah. That he knows who or where <laughs> what John Lennon is. What? He has, oh yeah, 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 yeah he's got to yeah, know who John Lennon is. Yeah, he's yeah, got to no, know the my Beatles. daughter. My daughter. Yeah, she's gonna have to have the kind of boyfriend who doesn't think pit bulls are nice dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, she doesn't want a pet pit bull. Oh, Wait, man. Uh, a dog uh, who doesn't think pit bulls are nice dogs? I mean, who does? No, no. Yeah, who, white people love pit bulls. No, no, no. no. Yeah. No, but white well, people won't have them in their house. Oh, white people will, yeah. Oh, well, I'm not talking about white people. I'm just talking about what I want my daughter's boyfriend <laughs> to act to. Way <laughs> I'm just going to give you one. Yeah, early. just clear the whole palette, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Nicodemus, <laughs> the fucking Greekest kid of all... Is this the Greekest kid of all he's time? He's modern-day Socrates. I mean, this kid, he's been probably Frank and Beans Greek by how Greek his Greekest family 100%. is. 100%. He's got the kind of... Just by his name, I could tell that he loves Panos. His family does not. Right. They're offended by Panos. He's got the type of name that if his family found out he was listening to this podcast, yeah. they would honor kill his sister. <laughs> yeah. Just make no mistake, yeah. just his daughters get a raw deal. Yes, yeah, his, da his daughter... Has, he, th this guy's sister still has not left the house. Nah, she lives in the attic, and yeah. that's what it is. His yeah. last name's so Greek, you had to say it twice. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how difficult Papa it was. Papa <laughs> yeah, you know, the Bolus. Greek name usually doesn't trip up Giannis. Yeah, maybe. wow. Nicodemus Papadopoulos. Okay, so he says, showed my girlfriend the pod, uh, your Greek girlfriend, as we know. <laughs> yeah, you uh, showed Athena the pod. Yeah, you, yeah. Th you showed Athena the pod. And he says, make no mistake, I was extremely scared to show my girlfriend the pod because you guys are just some gross kids who fart in mics, but I did it anyway <laughs> because the new episode just came out and I had no choice but to listen to it regardless of who was in my car. And at that very second, and she ended up loving it and is currently listening to every episode. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Athena! Athena! And then uh, Nate Seaman, he's a big fan. He wants to do our designs. Um, he ha he came up with something funny. He says, has anyone emailed the simulators at Patreon to see if we can get our page renamed to Matreon? That's a great idea. In honor of the matriarchy, uh, smash the Patreon hashtag. All right. And well, then, we're going to start calling it the Matreon now in honor of Mr. Seaman. Yeah, I like that. The Matreon. Yeah, Seaman is great. And the fans have come up with some of our best nicknames, the Matreon and Jihadi with a Body. Jihad, yeah, who was it who came up a with A fan you? came up with Yeah, that. he did. It was like some guy named Glenn or something. Yeah, some of Jihadi with a party. <laughs> yeah, I actually stole it and set it on Comedy Central. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> so uh, then we got our first round draft pick, Clay Anthony. Oh, big, yeah, Clay Anthony's number one. He's going to the Knicks or the Bucks. Yeah, he goes, make no mistake. Clay Anthony's a guy who, I don't know if he could date my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Way so <laughs> shit. You know, Make no, he says, make no mistake, I'd give more money every month because this is my favorite podcast, but not if it's paying for the muzzy to control the soundboard. <laughs> Wei Shang Xing, Wei Shang Xing. <laughs> Play, baby, yes. Yeah. So there you go. Clay Anthony coming with a good So these one. are positives. Yeah, there's some positives. Then we got uh, Layla. Got a couple of neggies. Wow. Le <laughs> we got Layla Solak Sabusi. That's a fun one. What kind of name is that? Turkish delight. She goes, I'm surprised Giannis didn't get any Turk tingles in his balls. That's another good one. Yeah, Turk, <laughs> Turk tingles. tingles. Whenever you're around a Turk, you should be able to sense it with Turk tingles. With Turk tingles. In your you're, balls. You're 20% Turk. It's what it is. 26% Turkish. Yeah, Wait, that came back. Huh? That, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's why we want to, on this, this podcast, we want to do. And we have to do it on this podcast. Yeah, we got to do it. Please. Dude, I refuse how to about do this? It. What if he comes back 100% hate bird? How about this? How about this? I got an idea. Yanni. That I, is my race. I'm going wild, but just say yes. Yeah. You let us do it on this podcast. Do it results. We're going to pay We're gonna pay one month of your rent for you. We're going to give you a month. 
Yeah, I like well, in that. that case, we're gonna pay it. Seriously, so, I don't mind that. So, yeah. what are you guys doing next that. Monday? Yeah. Huh? I don't Let's mind. Book it now. If or, you spin in we, and you let us and you let us read the results, one month of your rent is on us. And you know what? If you will give us a picture of your glue gun, if you, you fully, three months utilities, fully charged up, we're gonna put it on the. We're gonna. Uh, we, uh, how about this? We'll have a picture of James's glue gun when our Patreon reaches what? One thousand. No, I'm not putting my. No, penis listen. No, ten people. Patreon. People are fucking curious about your penis. No, dog. Listen yeah, to me. Yeah, I'm not putting my dick out there. Five, what are you gonna pay me for that? A five, whole years? Five thousand for five. If we get to five thousand Patreon members, <laughs> aka Matreon members. Look at that face right there. Yeah, that, was, that is the if face that get, someone should make. You don't like, have to. You don't have that. to put your naked glue gun. But if you could just give us, you could just get. We're gonna in, in tight. In I want to see his piece. Get your glue gun there. Yeah. If, get your glue gun there. <laughs> if you can do that. If you could do that, I'm willing. I'm willing to pay four months of your rent. What is the four months to see the Google? Yeah, yeah. five thousand Patreons in. We'll use the Patreon Cause money. You're fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Because uh, you uh, cannot afford to pay yeah. four months of his rent. You have three babies, mamas to pay. <laughs> yeah. If we get to ten thousand Patreons, I'm going to put your glue gun in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy Sabbath. Yeah. Guys, we're deaf. We got a lot of messages about your glue. What gun. is the female circulation of this podcast? How we got some girls. We got a lot of we girls. Got girls. We got a lot of cultural diversity. You see the last cutie oh, yeah. with smoothies yeah. what if on the Instagram? What yeah. if the Turkish girl? So here, you know, my, I've been saying this for a while for your wedding. I would love to bring a Turkish date you to your do. wedding. Ooh, you so if I could her? get a Turkish date off this, if you're a Turkish girl, if you're, if you're a Turkish it. girl with proven Turkish ancestry. And you're listening to the podcast, and you're a Matron member, uh, you're a member of the matriarchy. You, we will, and you want to be James's date to Giannis's wedding. We will give you. We're going to think of a good gift for you. But first, you got to message us and prove that you're Turkish, and then we'll come up with the idea. Yeah, how do they prove it, everybody? Well, they got to do ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. Oh. If they're Turkish, yes. it's twenty bucks. Well, if they get too. the tingles, if, if, you, if they come around and I get Turk tingles, <laughs> if he gets, if he gets yeah. TT. Yeah, if I get TT. <laughs> okay, Hallie. Uh, Romeo. Oh, Romeo. She, she, she didn't. Work. I think we said she's a piece. Yeah, I, you have to say it because my girl told me to stop calling girls pieces. On okay, the yeah, sorry. And then, and then you can. Rosado's a piece too, and she's one that, who said that yeah. she hasn't, she hasn't gotten, um, she hasn't paid the paid for the podcast. Well, Holly Romano says Asians are not safe, and she says here to say I upgraded my pledge yet again because I just can't get enough of this fucking matriarch. But for the love of God. She says, sorry, Zach Isis face. If you guys don't guess my ethnicity this time to pronounce my name correctly after I phonetically spelled it before, I might get steel pipe Chrissy on your asses and make no mistake, even though I did comment my ethnicity before Giannis does have early onset. So it's like, yeah, it was never even mentioned. Yeah, this girl's Frank's and Beans. Frank's and Beans. <laughs> That's a lot of run on sentences. Romeo? Romeo, Romeo, I'm going to guess that you are Romanian, is my guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to guess that Holly Romeo, I'm going to guess she's... She's uh, a piece. I'm going to guess... Um, it's Mexican. I'm going to guess Mexican. Romeo. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. guess Mexican. See? Because Mexicans know Mexicans. Or I grew up with Romeros, and or, they were Mexicans. Or you, so got, there you, go. you got the Mexican tingles. I got the tings. All right. And then we got Deanna Durazo. She says, I'll have you know I recommended this episode... <laughs> Catholics versus Protestants to someone I met on Bumble who's also a former recovering Catholic and make no mistake he thought it was wild and kind of offensive needless to say I won't be seeing him anytime soon so thanks cuzzy wuzzies for helping me weed out all the cocks I don't need to date yeah Diana Durazo if yeah. you want to date just DM at Chris D Comedy I'm a Catholic yeah there you go and by the way Haley Romeo R-O-M-E-U I like to change it She's Puerto Rican. I think she's Puerto Rican. I'm sticking with Mexican. I think Romeo's Puerto Rican. I'm it's something with... Spanish. It's something Latina. Uh, uh, by the way, real quick, Nicole Rosati, who's a piece, she's the one that said her Patreon hasn't updated since November 8th. So I don't know what the problem is. We can definitely take a look into it, but it may be because you haven't up. Maybe something with your pledge. Yeah. Check your credit card. And for you people trying to erase your Patreons and then uh, restart them to save money, fuck you. No, man. Yeah. You're stealing. Yeah, and I'm going to shit in a bag and light it on fire and throw it at your front door. <laughs>
And Courtney says, uh, yes, I'm about to complain because unfortunately I'm a white girl who wants to speak to the manager. Yes. That's so good. I'm a white girl who wants to speak to the manager. She says, either I'm the one matriarch that got cut out of Jihadi with a body shit recording, or you all forgot to mention me on the podcast. My name's a great guessing game for Giannis, and I was real excited to hear him guess my ethnicity wrong. I love how even these girls are ending it with, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In caps. So, Courtney. What it what did uh did we have her on the list? No. Is her name just Courtney? We need to know your full Courtney, name. Courtney, what's her last name? I don't know. Let's see what the comments are. Uh No apologies. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what she's I don't know. Oh, uh, anyway, that's Courtney. Um and so that's it. We got some we got some great comments. Thank keep commenting. We'll read them on here. Keep commenting on our Patreon community board and um We'll, we'll obviously, like I just read the wild comments, we'll fucking read the wild we'll comments. We'll yeah. fucking get wild. Why not? Yeah. Today, you want to talk about the Sinaloan cartel? Of course I do. Yeah. Do it's you? Been, yeah, because here's, What do you want to do? Well, here's why I want to talk about it. So I, I said this on the podcast, too, last week, I think. I've been watching. I've watched all the season of Narcos. I love Narcos. Um, I think there's just... I mean, it's fucking great. It's great. And it's, it's all... Uh, great stories that are based in history and real, and and they're real, which I love. And there's so many fucking pieces on that show. I mean, you can watch that show every episode. You could just crank it to another Spanish piece. I mean, they're so hot. The women that they cast in that show are yeah. and yeah. So, and I was watching Narcos Mexico, and I have to be honest with you, the first four episodes I just didn't like. Like I was vocal about it. I was telling people, "Don't waste your time. The show sucks." Uh-huh. But then. You were telling people that in your all your group chats. How many group chats are you presently in right Truthfully, now? Truthfully? Yeah. Six. You're in six group chats. There's times where I like I won't look at my phone while we're doing the podcast. I'll have 150 unread messages and I'll read and reply to all of them. Group <laughs> while I'm driving. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> group chats is like that's millennials. That's the big thing, group chats. That's why we're tired all the time and need so much coffee. Our brains are exhausted from all this information. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's gotta be true. Is, that's a real young person's game, group chats. Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I have all my group chats on Do Not Disturb now, so like I check them periodically. I don't, I don't care if I respond to all of them. Are group chats getting big though? Is that like the thing? Like you're yeah. in a group chat or out of a group chat? Bro, Patty Fly Balls is in a group chat with twenty guys. He's one of twenty in the group chat. So it's like, what, what do you? And what do they do? You guys, they, just, they talk about the Mets. Yeah. It's nothing. Yeah, or or uh, they send you. Who's the person who sends you those crazy fucking? Me- uh... Who sends me those? those I crazy get them from videos. a bunch. Those, those are usually on the group chats yeah. from Debo, uh, Patty Fly Balls, or Chris the Worm. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the videos that will start with like a koala bear and then and it's yes. just a fist like in an the arm ass. up someone's yes. ass? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Adam Glynn's been said to me. He sent me that good one of that of that uh, transgendered woman that is very tricky. And yeah. the dick just comes out. Cause, yeah, because yeah, at first cause I was trying to get like a little. I'm starting to get a little chubbed up. Yeah, she looks like an absolute <laughs> feminine piece, and then she turns around and she's got a glue gun. Oh, yes! I saw that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Adam, um, Adam Glenn just sends them to me. So good kid, Adam Glenn. Good kid. The, the last Cute kid four too. episodes, the last four episodes of Narcos Mexico are like the best television I've ever seen. Right. It, so much to the point where I was like, we got to do an episode on the Sinaloan cartel because those guys are fucking wild. The brutality makes hyena brutality look. Tame and civilized. Yeah, I mean, El Chapo, who's like very famous right now, was like, you know, he was like, he's like the most recent leader of the cartel. But I mean, yo, back in the 70s and 80s, when shit was going down, El Chapo was just the main guy's driver. Yeah. He was just the main dude's fucking driver. With ambition. Yeah, with ambition. And it's like... The thing is, cause with that mustache, doesn't he just look like a math teacher, a computer teacher in he the does. early nineties? Yeah, yeah, Chapo. Yeah. yeah, he looks like a like a public school computer teacher. The thing is, like with these cartels and like with these drug, I didn't realize like so much of what happens, like the drug problem in America, all of it is because of Mexico. Yeah. So it's because we of- need to build a wall. Build a wall. <laughs> yeah. No. No. But like we were saying before, like it, after you watch a show like Narcos Mexico, you can see why a city like San Diego is an extremely conservative city. Yes. And why those border towns, like, yeah, we want the wall built. Nobody's devaluing the Mexican lives. Like it, nobody thinks. I mean, there are certain stupid people that think Mexican people aren't as capable as people from the United States, and that's just foolish and stupid. But the truth of the matter is, they got a huge problem in Mexico that they don't want it to spill into America. It, it you know, there's murders that happen right on the other side of the border within easy visual yeah. sight of 
American yeah, mass border exe- patrols. Executions with AK 47s on the Mexican highways that the U.S. Customs agents can see from San Diego right. or from, you know, Laredo, wherever. wherever. Juarez. Yeah, Juarez. Juarez Mexico. I mean, Tijuana, that's where a lot of the drugs come in. I mean, we're talking about just. I mean, tons and tons of fucking drugs come in through there. So, yeah. of course, San Diego is going to be a, a, a yeah. conservative the, on that the issue. The whole crack cocaine epidemic that's going on still to this day in Chicago is a direct. It's directly from the cartel. That's that's who who supplies it. So it's not there for. I mean, there's a lot of channels, but it's like you know, I get it. It's such an interesting, fascinating thing because the brutality is on a level. You can't. The brutality is hard. To, it's hard to believe that that is happening yeah. in the the Western Hemisphere. It's yeah. worse than horror movies. It's the it's yeah, the it's worst crazy. brutality. You know, they kidnap. You know, it's just it murder. They dissolve bodies. They disappear people. They decapitate people. They make de- they de- do decapitated video. Uh, videos just like uh, uh, your just relatives, like Zach's boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! yeah, yeah. I mean, they uh, they uh, they'll if you, not even if you've done anything, if you know someone who's done something, they'll murder your family, they'll murder your wife. I mean, the brutality's on it, and they act with impunity because uh, they have so many police officers on the payroll. And if you want to know how much power, the Sinaloan cartel or like the Zetas have, and they're at war. These drug cartels are at war. Oh, they are, right? Yeah. If you want to know how much power they have, all you got to do is look at the photographs when they capture like guys in the cartel. All the officers are fucking wearing face masks because they're petrified to show their face because they don't want anything to happen to their families. That is how much power. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if our cops had to hide their faces when they when they captured people? That lets you know who's in charge right there. Yeah, I mean it's like you and know it's not the police. The problem the problems that we have the problems that we have with our police are obviously profound too and, and all that sucks. But the problem that they have in Mexico it's like yeah, I mean, it's not going to be some fucking, you know, cop that innocently beats some beats up some kid and it's caught on video. It's going to be like some cop allowed this cartel to cut everybody's heads off and put them on their front lawn. Yeah. But it's like but here's the question though. It's like it's one of those things where it's like what do you want these Mexican people to do? If a cartel's going to come and say we're going to make change your life, you're a farmer now, you can't even feed your kids if you just make these deliveries for me, if you just do this or that for me. I mean, what would you do? I would probably do it. I can understand. I mean, look at it, dude. I mean, with that choice, El Chapo. He's like, it's. I mean, he's like the Jeff Bezos of Mexico. Yeah. I mean, it's like that's the cash crop. I mean, like you look at. Um, he was going to open up in Long Island City too. Yeah, yeah. Pablo Escobar. Yeah. I mean, these guys. They were like the Jeff. Be- they have. I mean, we're talking about a ten billion dollar uh, industry. You're talking about a multi billion dollar industry. You're talking about El Chapo. At one point, was the, the tenth richest man in all of Mexico. No, he, all of the world, probably. No, Mexico. Just I mean, there's Mexico. some rich people in Mexico. Yeah, right? I mean, it's a whole country. Yeah. But but number 10, top 10, is, 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 a, is a drug yeah. dealer? Yeah. That's, that's how much... That's how, that's how much money the government knew about, though. Well, and yeah, exactly. Could probably, exactly. That's a, actually a great could point. Could have been more. He probably, could be by far the richest. Yeah. But like, they, it, it's absolutely, especially with all the front companies he has, with the, all the money that's laundering through... through, through uh, the bank. What bank is it? There's... TD, there's a there's a U.S. bank. It's a Netflix thing, a Dirty Money. There's an episode about it. I want to say TD, but I don't want to be wrong. But it's one of the major banks. Is at, they 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 like encourage you not to put your money there because they know it's cartel money, right? And that people are getting their heads chopped. Tr- like Paul, this is how hardcore they are. You're talking about how like vicious they are. They uh kill politicians. Yeah, in Mexico. They, yeah, yeah. Politicians will go like if you yeah. go, hey, I'm running. Uh, elect me this year. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the drug dealers, or I'm going to do this. You might lose a hand or a head. Yeah, like well, that's going to happen. Well, that's but yeah, but see, but that's what I want to get to and it's talk crazy. about why the Mexican drug cartel is is I think the most wild. But then I'm going to ruin Narcos Mexico for you. You're still watching episodes. <laughs> it's okay. Are you sure? Yeah, it's okay. But because you, you know should what? know what happens anyway. Yeah, but we are lucky for this episode to have a mexican kid from texas sitting oh, yeah. right here yeah. what have you done to get in this country I let me see your i paper. didn't even realize you were here you fucking useless eater <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Can we see your papers, please? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. so, so you have you have you know about this? Uh, yeah, I have uncles in the border patrol. Uncles in the border patrol. Yeah. Do you feel as Americans, their lives are ever in danger, or the cartel would never cross to hurt an American agent? I know it does happen because fucking cuckfates doesn't want me to say it. he doesn't he hasn't finished Narcos Mexico. Uh, I have an older uncle who died of a heart attack. Who uh, he was probably in danger when during his career because he was out there. So you the think field, he re- actually stuff. died of a heart attack, or it was something? Oh yeah, he was fat as shit. But right. um, my, my other uncles are more doing uh, other kind of stuff. Like they'll do like the the door drilling. So they're they're not really after the cartels. More of the delivery people. Like, but it's, like the it's, border it's, it's patrol, they're not like if even if they go like on the border and like the cartel guys are there, like they're never going to kill a U.S. border patrol agent. If they did, it would be front page news. Like. And they got a lot. Uh, of they, f- they would in the right situations. Like they are in danger. They have to worry. The best too. You could have a and couple of corrupt, uh, corrupt border patrol. Yeah, yeah, that too. You know, <laughs> that does, does happen. It, do the Mexicans talk like that in in Texas and California? Only the fun ones. The fun <laughs> ones, man. Like my family is coming from Mexico, and his name is James Matter. <laughs> Only half a cousin. Cause Maybe. you got a face that looks like it's from Tijuana. <laughs> Sunday. Now, Mexican and Mexican, are you, are you saying, because we don't know, I don't know, he was here, he wasn't here for, the, he wasn't. Mike Mush wasn't Suarez here wasn't here, no. Okay, so here's the deal, real quick, because the matriarch knows about it. Uh, James, I love saying it too, because it's funny to me, James uh, Matter's mom was a toot. He what? loves saying it out loud. <laughs> a toot. He just can't a, say it enough. A professional toot, like an actual okay. toot, in Vegas, Yeah. high-end toot. Probably was a piece. He don't. You know. He have asked to... me on the drive in. Hey, was your mo- out of nowhere? Was your mom? A p- We're talking about how I get sad on the holidays. <laughs> like I love the build. He's like, if Christmas had a vagina, I would fucking be up in it. I'm like, I love That's Christmas. Weird. I yeah. want. I yeah. want to fuck Christmas. Yeah. Plus. Well, let's be honest. If, if, no, let's be honest. If Chris had a post op fucking vagina, Yo! <laughs> a post op piece. <laughs> no, not even post op. I just wish it had a piece and titties. Yes, a trendy trans Christmas. And I tell him how I. I like- told him I want to fuck Christmas, yeah. and I asked. If his mom was a toot. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, if his mom was a piece. Because I tell him was a piece. I read you she was a toot. I like the build up to Christmas and then the day of, like most holidays other than Halloween, the day of I get sad. goes, why? Because the memories. I go, no, memories are good. And then out of nowhere, quick pivot. Was your mom a piece? <laughs> like, this makes no sense. I mean, if she was a toot, she had to have been a kind and, of a and piece. James is a good looking kid. James okay. James gets a lot of toots. Yeah, James get gets nothing. a lot. James has banged a couple of girls you've heard of. Yeah, but James, <laughs> James has banged a few broads. Yeah, James has now decided that um, sweatpants is his new look. And he asked me what I thought. I said, "Well, it looks like you're doing chores on a Sunday. Yeah, or that's your look. No, yeah, no, look at it this. looks. Look. I got to be honest. You're wearing the official uniform of Sunset Park. <laughs> if you know what that means, Google it." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and the way Shang Chi. Yeah, way Shang Chi. Thank you, thank you. Saturday night we're at a diner, and the 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 server was uh probably Mexican or, yeah. or Central American. I mean, and, I would say one hundred percent Mexican. And Giannis turns to me and goes, "Uh, what, I think she's she knows you're Mexican because like she filled my water first yeah. and yeah. always looked at me first and yeah. asked me questions. Yeah. She's like she knows it's Mexican on Mexico. She's your <laughs> aunt. She's your. She aunt. was like twenty one. That's your aunt. I, she, I do not want to go into a restaurant that does not have Mexicans handling it. 100%. Nobody. I just don't want to deal. It is what it is. I don't want to. I had a Russian waiter on Sunday for they brunch. Me it. and Brittany. He fucked up the order. I just want a Mexican because nobody's as good. Yeah. Nobody does it better with any job. Yeah. If a Mexican shows up to do any job, whether it be food, building something, driving, they will do it correctly. Now, they'll off-duty Mexicans is another thing because they get drunk and they could get a little dangerous. <laughs> oh but, but, but when Way they're on shame. duty with their jobs, Mexicans are the best workers that Americans have to offer. It's 100% the illegals. The best huh. Italian restaurant right now in Bay Ridge Owned by Mexicans. Absolutely. Picante. Picante. It was three Mexican guys that, that were working in other Italian restaurants. They combined forces to make a super Mexican. <laughs> and they and, <laughs> and the super Mexican opened up Picante. And it is the best food in Bay Ridge. I agree with you. They're, they're so good. Activate. And if you put them all on their one on top of each other on their shoulders, they would be about my height, maybe a little shorter. <laughs> Wei Song Xi. They're like Mexican Voltron. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's what Orale. it is. So Suarez, yes. we don't know if 
James James's father definitely paid to fuck his mom. We, well, we do don't know, know that. for a fact. Yeah. She had yeah. she dated some Jewish dudes and she had a Mexican boyfriend in Mexico. Okay, yeah. she and came we don't back know. With we, we think he could have been Mexican. I've or, seen a picture of him. His right. family be- believes it comes down to he's either his father was either a, a Jew or a Mexican. Looking at his face, you being Mexican. But that could be anything. I could be a random John who didn't wear a helmet. Basically. It could be a true doll. Yeah. yeah. You could be a true tr- <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have prime minister blood. Yes. So, <laughs> what do you <laughs> What do you think? We we do know he's part Italian, German, all the but the other half is yeah. either Well, we know it's because his grandma was a Nazi. His grandmother was a <laughs> Hitler, we know. Hitler youth. Yeah, and she, she had she, no she, options for she co- Stop fighting that. She helped coordinate. Stop fighting yeah, that. She had the no options. Because your cause, grandmother knew she coordinated. Coordinated the bomb attack that killed your aunts, nieces, and nephews exactly. of the movie. Club. It is. <laughs> she knew it out. Is. Just stop fighting the fact that your mother, your grandmother, was an actual Hitler youth. Yeah, you would have been the... too if you're there. What up? We get to the pure. Doesn't matter. I'm not gonna wear the uniform Doesn't when you're eight. Doesn't matter. Cause, cause when you look in the mirror, all I when I look at you, all I fucking see is success. Cause your grandmother was a Nazi, your mother was a toot, and you fucking made it to Bay Ridge. <laughs> so you're a fucking success story. I want you to wear, uh, write the foreword to my uh, biography on that. <laughs> yeah. So Suarez, what do you see when you look in his eyes? Do you see oh, yeah, Mexican? Or Jew. You set this up like it's a game show. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jihadi's so on point right now. Jihadi's great. I can't right. even tell he's a 23-year-old kid that knows nothing. When Jihadi's <laughs> jacked, he sucks. When he just looks like a blubbering shit, he's fucking great. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, he is doing so many steroids. That's yeah. why his body's so inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's the verdict? Well, you're tall and he can grow a full beard, so that's kind of a false flag right there. Tall, five ten. For a Mexican, you're tall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true. That's NBA Mexican yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but but your eyes have very Hispanic qualities. I do. So I would say there is some Mexican in there. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, I think the other test would see if you can uh, dig for root vegetables with your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, Suarez yeah. took a swing and made contact. Yeah. <laughs> Suarez, nice, Suarez. You're 100 percent Mexican, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. yeah. So your family members are Border Patrol agents. What's the climate down there in Texas? What where, 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 where part of Texas are you from? I'm from San Antonio, which is like in the middle, like an hour from Austin. Okay. So is that the Sinaloa cartel's territory? Do we know what the Sinaloa cartel I think their territories they are. They have the triangle. There's, uh, it's, uh, no, but that's in Mexico, but I'm talking in the United States where oh. they supply the drugs. I think Chicago El, they, I, w- I was reading on the I was listening to the news and they said El Chapo's directly responsible his cartel for the drug problem in Chicago. That may just be fucking media blaming it on him, but when I did the research, that's what it, they said. Well, it's uh they 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 provide 80%, they supply 80% of the heroin, cocaine, marijuana, methamphetamine uh, flowing into Chicago each year. You are correct, sir. Yes. Yeah, we're not going to know which cartel it's from. It's like you, you don't you know what supplier do goes to Walmart. Yeah. You just get your drugs from the guy now in the look, corner. But you- from Chicago, it goes west to Los Angeles. It goes east to New York, Philly, D.C., Cincinnati, Columbus, um, and uh, up into Vancouver. So it flows through Chicago. Now, see, I just also think, though, I'm one of these guys that I believe that drugs – Drug addictions and drug problems is not a prison problem and a law enforcement issue. It's a health issue. So I think a lot of these problems happen, all this murder and violence, because the law enforcement's involved. Portugal, do you guys know that Portugal, drug, you're allowed to do drugs in Portugal. You can do drugs. Everything. Everything. But if you do drugs in Portugal, the a co- and if you, first of all, if you drive a drug overdose to like, you know, I'm sorry that happens. But if you're like strung out, Obviously, if you're behind the wheel of a vehicle and you killed someone, now we're talking about a different thing. But if you're just on drugs, they will take you, the police take you to a clinic. That's where you, like as if you're taken to a hospital, if you had a heart attack on the street, you're taken to the hospital, you are taken to a clinic in Portugal and their crime has decreased. Their crime is the lowest it's ever been in the past five years in Portugal. Well, to be specific, the use, they decriminalize the use of, of drugs. drugs, but they did not decriminalize the selling of drugs. Okay, so you can still be arrested for selling it. So, uh, but you're not arrested for using it. Correct. They decriminalize the usage of drugs. But why? Can't, they're not the only ones but, who've done that. But if they're going to decriminalize the use, why not? Why not just decriminalize the sale of it, and then just as a government, you have to just pay a tax like it's just a job. Well, that's it's just a storefront, and then you and then you won't have people's heads in the streets. Well, you're gonna have people who are addicted to drugs, and it's like that's the kind of person where that happens. People get sick, people do drugs, but well, it's like you're not gonna have these cartels killing everybody if you just make things legal. I think it's just an egotistical thing by the governments to say 
it's no because we said no. Well, that that that's a that's a point of contention. I mean that that's a point of contention. I uh, you may have a point, you may not. I mean, I believe personally, I believe obviously legalization of marijuana. Obviously, marijuana is not as dangerous as alcohol. As even alcohol is da- more dangerous than fucking marijuana. But. But kids are fucking susceptible. You see how many kids are dying from heroin overdoses in the suburbs right now. Okay, you can't buy it till they're eighteen, just like alcohol. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying that, that's that's the thing is, it's like alcohol is dangerous, but it's not fucking as dangerous as opium, as heroin. Yeah. It's but not as never, addictive okay, as those. Okay, I I understand that, but you're you can't, never if you legalize going it's just going to be stop, everywhere. You're never going to stop. Harold, well, you're, you're not, not going to stop it. You're not going to start stop murder either, but you're not going to make it legal necessarily. But, maybe I don't know. I'm just bringing okay, up the so point. So maybe opium, maybe opium's one, but cocaine coca- too. Cocaine's dangerous. It's a dangerous drug. Yeah, but it's like people are going to do it or they're not going to do it. Like even if heroin and cocaine were legal, I still wouldn't never do it. Now that doesn't make me a better guy than anybody else. But I didn't not because you did a cycle when you were young. Yeah, I did not do it. I did not do it. I didn't. <laughs> Not do it, and your head got big, and it stayed. Yeah, I just did it because I didn't want to do it, and most people don't want to do it. There are a good amount of people who do want to do it, but most people don't do it. So it's like the the decriminalizing these things. I think makes it better. It's not going to ever be decriminalized, but it's just like I think it's safe to say that these people, the Mexican government, the U.S. government, they want this. They that gives the law enforcement jobs. They could make it all better tomorrow. It's not going to happen. I don't know. You have to accept that. It's just not going to happen. I don't know. It's an interesting point. Yeah. yeah and, and back to the original point of what makes us so fascinated is, is because it's so multifaceted. One of the most interesting facets being that the the demand is huge in America. Huge. And so that's what causes yeah. this competition between the cartels for the business. Because we got money in this because country. Because we got money and we love to get fucking high. Yeah. And you know who most of the people... Are that like to get high in this country? Yeah. What? What? Yeah, and you were a big part of it when you were party promoting. You were involved that involved in that life, and you got shot in the leg. Oh, I got shot. You got Bam. shot almost in the ball sack. Yeah, but it had nothing to do with drugs. That, yeah, but yeah, no, it had nothing to do with drugs. Drug dealers you, you at were that club in that area, and I'm sure that. The guy who shot you, which I wish the bullet would have just went a little higher. <laughs> and took off my pants? Yeah, it took off your pants. Well, then I could have just lived my dream and turned it into the vagina yes. that I always wanted. Yeah. I, I just want to be the... I want to... When I think of myself as a girl, it turns me on. Really? I'm fucking <laughs> Buffalo Bill. Yeah, you fucking I'd jerk fuck up me. to yourself as a girl. I'd fuck me. I Would you fuck me? Um... I think, but you, being around that lifestyle, of course, there's a lot of danger, but I just feel like if you decriminalize these things, it just makes it better. Listen, rape, murder, these things are crimes that you can never decriminalize because it's crime. You're taking lives. You're you know hurting people. Doing drugs, it's just like it doesn't have to be about the law. You're doing it to yourself unless you but get in a vehicle. But if you're the vehicle, parents of a kid... Who's on heroin? You're gonna. You may look at it differently. Yeah, but listen. If I was, if my daughter ever decided to do heroin, I would try to do. Every- Means she's hanging out with people we told her not to hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it, yes. Just kidding, because no, that's usually who's well, doing heroin is the honka ducks. Yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. honka ducks. I would say what my whole thing would be if she decided to do that would be, if you send her to prison, it's gonna get worse. Now you're putting around all these addicts again, mm. and you're learning. She's learning even worse strategies. Yeah. Put her in a hospital. If she got behind the car and killed someone, then put her in jail. Well, that's but but that. But if they're I just doing, I agree with that. If you she's de- shooting up and she's and she's falling over, why are you putting her in fucking jail? Decriminalize the usage. I agree yeah. with that, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, Portugal is a great case study. Yeah, for how that's beneficial. Yeah, for the reasons you said. Yeah, but and I, by the way, speaking of Portugal, real quick, when I'm in a good mood, I do fucking crank a little bit to Cristiano Ronaldo. It's what it is. <laughs> He's a pretty man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got caught with a couple trans, didn't he? Yeah. Or was that the other Ronaldo? Dwight. Well, Dwight Howard recently did, and then- uh, I, The other Ronaldo. The first Ronaldo. Maybe, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the first famous Ronaldo. From Brazil. Yeah. yeah. He got caught But with. in Brazil, that's going to happen. No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean- they they got some make no mistake. That's what it is, right? When this podcast gets to the next level, and we're selling out theaters, and we get to a really big level, we got like a big show and everything, you will 100,000% satiate your need for toots- a specific, a specifically transgender toots, and it's going to be a story on TMZ, and I'm just ha- I already have a statement prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> oh. 
It's just the truth. Cause this is this is a wild podcast. Yeah, because we. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I like I, that comment was really funny when he she said I tried to recommend the podcast, but it was it, the guy said it gave him a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we give some people because are Listen, we? Not, it's not everybody's for everybody. Are we not a smart podcast? I think <laughs> I don't think that we're intentionally trying to be dumb or smart. I think we're just being. I think we're the kind of podcast where if you you maybe will learn something if we get to the history of it. But I think you're just entertained if you want to take a step back from your life and just get an hour break. Where your guys, and you may also learn something while you're kind of de-escalating from a long day at work, or or maybe you know just want to get, just don't want to feel like you're being told anything, don't want to feel like you have to now go Google something, like you just want to feel good. I think we're your guys. Yeah, I mean, it's so much of the drugs in the world is supplied by Mexico, by Mexico, and I'm, and South America too. Still, yeah. I mean the. The Columbia, global still, right? Yeah. I mean, the global flow of cocaine, I'm looking at the map right now. Um, it just, it flows from South and Central America to the rest of the world. I mean, that's like their cash crop, man. I mean, how do you blame them? It's it's simple supply and demand. Like, what are you going to do? Are you you can knock, somebody is always going to rise to fill that void. Like El, like we mentioned El Chapo. Right. If you didn't, if you don't know, El Chapo's on trial. He was extradited to the United States. He's on trial right now in Brooklyn. Yeah. He's going to go down. But there's somebody else who's probably already filled his of shoes. Of course, just like when you knock out, you know, terrorism. Because terrorism is like, it's just an idea. It's not like one person. Like you, when you cut, you know, back in the day, like if you cut the head off some fucking big leader, yeah. they th nobody could replace him or her because it's what it is. Now it's like... Yeah, you know, nobody really cares. I mean, the cartels are loyal to El Chapo now and to these big drug dealers now when they're loyal to Escobar because that was the guy in charge. Once that person's gone, the next guy pops up. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter. You're never going to stop this problem. They're loyal to their next meal. Sure. So whoever can provide it, it's like, you're great now. Yeah. Oh, you're in the clink? Hello, next great one. Next like, great one, it. yeah. And it's like, you're not going to ever get rid of it. I think the U.S. government has some fucking fantasy that they think they can stop this when it's like, G Portugal decriminalizing uh, uh, drugs is not them giving up on drugs and it's not them throwing in the towel and saying, oh, we lost. It's them making the smart choice because it's a health. It it's them caring about their people more than they care about their fucking you know, prisons. Yeah, it's a humane thing to do. It looks at an addict more as a sickness than as a, as a crime. Yeah, so it's more it's, it's more humane. It's a real libertarian view too, right? Like uh, I, I guess yeah. no, but but like that's that's what it is. Yes, it's, it's like all right. So this is what we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the crime aspect by legalizing it. So now you'll go get it at Seven Eleven. The price will be controlled, so you won't deal with drug dealers, and you control your own destiny to go buy it if you want to do that. It's you, and also. Here's the big libertarian. We get tax money out of it. Sure. So it's like a big win-win in that aspect. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, my mom's a junkie on top to be an Wait, what do you mean you get tax year. dollars out of it? So if it becomes legal, yeah, he's you gonna get tax them. That's yeah. the whole thing. That's yeah, the whole reason why weed is, wasn't legal, so they couldn't tax it. Look at start the, taxing it now. Look at oh, the you're saying if. because yeah, yeah, if not, you legalize not, yeah, H. That's what I, I thought it, what you were saying it was a reality in Portugal. It's not. They're not taxing drugs. No, but it, here, it's like the libertarian view is if you legalize it, and if I can go to 7-Eleven and get a Slurpee, a hot dog... And uh, some H, boy, uh, th that tax money. Think about that. Fucking great. Will that be yeah. a combo? Would would fast food make nah. those combo meals? I mean, <laughs> yeah. It would, KFC, two legs, two cookies, yeah. a Coke, and well, opium and, and, a syringe. and heroin because you of cannot how legalize the distribu distribution of drugs. There would be fucking drug addicts everywhere. Weed, you can. Weed, of course. Weed, you can. You of can't course. do it with opium, but weed should just be as legal. You should be able to buy weed next to beer. Well, libertarians think it should all be legal. Yes. And just let it happen. But you know, they're just you know they believe in chaos. They're crazy yeah they just it's anarchy when i go well, home no, they think it'll all work I don't itself out no, no no i don't necessarily not believe i don't not i don't necessarily disagree with them because i believe what i believe too is yeah legalize it all and if you're a kind of person that that's what you need to do and you do it then you deal with the fucking consequences yeah, but those people end up doing bad things to get money for drugs well then we fucking yeah. arm ourselves <laughs> <laughs> Build the wall. Yeah. Comes back to the Second Amendment, right? Baby? Yeah. Pipe Christie. Well, that's another facet we're going to talk about. But just to give people some history, real quick, El Chapo. His name, El Chapo. It's a nickname. Oh yeah. It's what does it mean, El Chapo? It means Suarez. shorty. 
Oh, the shorty. Okay. I mean, shorty, short, because guy, make short. no mistake, this kid is five foot six. That's even short for a Mexican, right? Uh, I think for a Mexican, it's pretty tall. Mid-range. I mean, it's it, you know for a yeah. <laughs> he's a mid-range Mexican, everybody. Yeah, he became the Mexico's top drug guy in like uh, the early two thousands, and uh, he again we he filled a void that was left by OCL Cardenas Guillen of the Gulf Cartel after his arrest. That was the rival cartel. Okay, they took them down, and El Chapo came in, and um, the kid he's a sixty one year old kid. El Chapo, and um, he is, he escaped from federal prison, and there's not one frame of footage <laughs> that shows the escape. <laughs> that lets you know that who was how much the drug cartel runs Mexico. Yeah. To your point, it's illegal. But so maybe if yeah, I mean you make well. I, we should can try I just give it, the example? Maybe. I mean they the, run Mexico as it is. Listen, you're watching Narcos Mexico, and I don't think you knowing this information because I knew this from the beginning. What was going to happen? Because I knew the story. Kiki Camarena, who's Michael Pena's character in Narcos Mexico, is going to be murdered by the Mexican cartel with the hundred percent knowledge of the Mexican government allowing it to happen. They drilled a hole in his fucking head while he was alive and Jesus. murdered him. A DEA federal agent, the Mexican government, said okay and allowed it. So that's why the that's why I think the Mexican cartel is because even Pablo Escobar would not touch a U.S. agent. So and this war on drugs that we have right now is a direct influence from that incident. They killed a DEA agent and a government uh, pilot for information to try to get information about what they knew about some wiretaps. So they completely crossed the line, and now. That's why we're still in this war. If that would have never happened, I don't know. There's probably a lot of shit America turns a blind eye to because it really doesn't inv involve them. But when you kill the DA agent, now that's why I asked you about do Border Patrol, do they still feel unsafe? Yes. They, they still do. So, so you think a Mexican cartel still to this day will kill an agent? 100% they'll probably, kill an agent. They probably buy if, a if few off. The, if they're in the wrong situation, yeah. So if a DA agent was in Juarez right now, which I'm sure there are, they could get killed. If they're there for the wrong reason, yeah. Yeah. Like just existing and being just there, being no, on the street, but... they know that they're being surveilled. They're not going to kill them because they know that's going to bring the heat. Right, but if they're yeah. getting, I mean, not to sound, you know, but they're getting too close or they know something, yeah, they'll fucking kill them. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you do? You, they certainly buy off border patrol agents too, probably. Probably. I mean, I don't know the statistics yeah. on that. But my, my Michael does have a nice car. But... It's got it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Your uncle might be involved. Yeah. I mean, they have to. That's the way they get it in. I mean, they just buy pay people off. Um, they've also they also transport cocaine from Colombia to Mexico and then up to the U.S. Yeah, and it's because do Mexican people do the Mexican uh, public have a have a bigger drug problem as us, or is the answer no? No, have the money they don't. America is the number one consumer of drugs in the, in world. the world. Right, we love to get fucking high. Well, also okay, yes, that's okay. Uh, one. We have the money. We also, with proximity, closest to Mexico, which which is which is capable of making all those drugs because of their terrain. So I wonder if Europe doesn't have as big a drug problem because I mean it's got to be a big deal. I don't think the Mexican can the Mexican drugs somehow get to Europe. Yeah, they do. How do they get across the ocean? They do. I guess just smuggled in on boat. Well, that's freight, the, yeah, that's or planes, the, whatever. That's yeah. the genius of the Sinaloa cartels that they also built up a shipping and transportation empire to facilitate. Their... Oh, yeah, it's ingenious ways. They put it in tires. Yeah. They put it in fucking... They said... The one Border Patrol agent said that they'll put it in, um like, carburetors of engines. Like, they'll put it, like, in the... Like, you have to take apart the car to get it out. Well, it's smart. They laundered... You know, you got to launder your money, as all the Breaking Bad fans know. that Now that became pop culture, everyone knows. When you got dirty money, you got to launder it. So you launder it by opening, uh, you know, legit yeah. businesses and hiding your money sure. that way. Where, you know, you report less earnings. So they, what they did is they they started shipping companies and shipped other shit and then snuck the drugs in there. And let's just be honest. Yes, of course, plenty of people get caught. I'm sure people get caught smuggling drugs from Mexico into the U.S. every day. But let's be honest. Our Border Patrol, although I fucking support our troops, if they're anything like the TSA, a lot of those guys just don't give a shit. They just don't. It's like I'm not. It's like if, if if a dog was fucking, you know, barking and there's drugs there, and I'm like, it's in the car, right? I got to take the car apart. I just be like, just go. You could go in. No, no, no. They're not like that. 
They're they're better than TSA. Oh, they're better. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Border like, Patrol is real deal. Like they don't fuck around. They're like the Marines. Yeah, you can't make jokes. So if the dog reacts the wrong way, they'll search through your shit. They'll see what it was. Yeah. They'll ask you the right. They'll ask you questions. It's not so, like but I'm sure a bored lady they get at it TSA, in a lot. Yeah. Mexicans get it in a lot. I'm sure because if they have all these they genius people, ways, they, and they, got, they do it the right way. They, yeah. they got yeah. They shipping. They they through the international waters. They 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 hide it in certain things. And 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 I think mostly probably just common sense would tell me people are paid off. Yeah. This is the border off. crossing like at the checkpoints. That's not like smuggling. That's just some guy with coke who's trying to get it in for himself. Because where are they doing the smuggling? Where there's no wall? Like, because because how can we? How can there be borders? There's just geographically. I mean, there's three thousand plus miles of lines. Be like, how can you? You can't have a, a U.S. agent there at every point. There's got to be miles where there's nothing. Yeah, there's miles where it's just like two guys in a truck going back and forth looking and, for the looking for shit. Yeah. And yeah. so inevitably, there's people. There's, there's. Are there like minefields there? Like, how does the U.S. prevent that? Or that's how the drugs get <laughs> that's in. It. That's how that's how they get in. Well, a lot One of, of the ways they get in. Yeah, a big re- way they get into is by air. They yeah. get in by air, and actually, like they just fly a private plane. Yeah, that was a big thing in the seventies, the cocaine eighties, cocaine cowboys, sixties, seventies. Yeah. Pedro Aveles Perez. He plays for the Mets. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was involved in that Mariners trade. Yeah, Cano, yeah. Cano, baby, coming to the fucking city, back to the city. <laughs> Pedro Aveles Perez. He founded the Sin- Sinola, Sinaloa cartel. cartel. Is that the Thin Man? Is that the guy who's the Thin Man in Narcos Mexico? Do we know? I don't know okay. because I've only watched one episode. I, I, th- I think that is the guy. <laughs> Yo, you'll see some wild shit's gonna happen. But he was, uh, he was. Um, uh, of the first generation of Mexican drug he smugglers. He used to be a cop, too. And um, he uh, he's the one who, he specifically is the one that pioneered the use of uh, planes to bring in drugs. So it's Smart. because of him. Pedro Aveles Perez. Oh, these these guys, these are, guys not, are not Frank these guys Sabines. Are, these guys are not stupid at all. El Chapo no. is not a stupid man he's by any means. He's not fucking stupid. No, he's a smart fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the Sin- Sinaloa cartel operates in that triangle, right? Um, the Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. Yeah. Those, the, the, those three states. I guess they call it the the triangle or the or the. I don't know what they do. They call that the triangle or the triangle. Am I just making that up? I don't know. Triangleito, yeah. The triangleito. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what they do? That's really smart. You're talking about that, like how smart they are. I saw that they will send drugs. To America, right? Like everyone's doing coke. They'll send samples of crystal meth because people are like buying recreational coke because they're making six, seven figures. And then they'll give them like the drug dealers will give you, hey, try this too when that runs out. And then people get hooked on meth, which is not recreational. Right. And then they make rich meth heads. Like right. that's gene. It's hor- it's evil and horrible, but, but it's absolutely genius. Yeah. You're, well, anytime absolutely you're, genius. Anytime you're preying on a person's vice, it's horrible, but. In a capitalistic country, that's how people make money. Think of that, dude. Now, the Sinaloa cartel has been at constant war with the Tijuana cartel. Okay, they got beef. For access to uh, the border city of San Diego, because Tijuana, of course, is right on the border with San Diego. But where's Sinaloa? Is that like Central Mexico closer to Texas? Is Sinaloa close to Texas? I think so. No? Yeah. What's by you? What's by Texas is Juarez. Uh, Juarez, um, Yeah, it's right on the other side of El Paso. Um, and then uh, Piedras Negras, a lot of cities like that. Yeah. So. But it's been believed that recently um, the Sinaloa. If you say Sinaloa one more time, I'm going to punch how you. Do you. It's Sinaloa. Sinaloa. Stop saying, stop putting an M in it, you <laughs> dirty Turk. <laughs> <laughs> the Sinaloa Federation has uh, absorbed most of the Tijuana cartel, so it looks like they're winning. The Sinaloan cartel has taken over Tijuana? Is, yeah, has absorbed a lot of it. So El Chapo's still in charge, right? I, I mean, well, if not we're anymore. being honest with each other? Not him, but he's he's going down. He's, he's going not down. calling the shots from jail? Mm, not I that we know it. of, right? I, I mean, I, doubt, I think he's just going to go down. Do you think there's a possibility that in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn right now, he's just like, he just has a cellmate? Like your randomly El Chapo cellmate? Or he's, yeah, just or some he's dude. But. Just some dude in for hopping a turnstile. Yeah, he's like, "Yo, what's up, man? What you in for?" He's like, "Oh, you know, for uh, for uh, illegally ferrying in a hundred tons of illegal narcotics and murdering three thousand people. What about you?" He's like, "Ah, oh, you know, 
hop the hop the turnstile at the junction stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, it I'm is. Jaywalk the floor. What it is? It's possible. It's very possible. He, dog saying no. He's saying he's he's gone solitary confinement. Yeah, of course watch. he's got to be. He's oh, in a goddamn yeah. box. They're yeah. watching that motherfucker. The only way you can actually break him out of jail is if the if there was enough uh, Mexican. Uh, people from his cartel already here with and you have a massive shootout and somehow he gets out you're not you have to have send an army he's not going to sm- he's not going to dig a hole out now yeah. here is another interesting facet about this whole thing that a lot of people don't know that they'll probably learn on this podcast because nobody really talks about it or understands it but it is fascinating and that is that Bubba's you leaving uh, no, no, say the point. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go, but I didn't want to I didn't want to blow up his All right, Bubba, where are you going I gotta leave where I got going? A, I got a gig Bubba's what time Seven, but I'm gonna walk there. Where are you at? Twenty fourth Street. Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, you're boop, 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 boop. Hey Bert. I, mean, I wanted to hear the point. Hey Bert. Oh, sorry. Oh hey Bert. Oh yeah. Now this we're gonna get a lot of them. Eight so we minutes get a of hey Bert <laughs> on the way out, and you'll never. And the point will never be made. The point was never made. It was By the way, to, thank was you, that. Andrew Agos, for making those hey Bert. Uh, <laughs> By the way, shout out Andrew. I just want to shout out real quick, Andrew Agos, right now. Andrew Agos came to my shows at the Chicago Improv. He gave me a, a, a beautiful Chicago Cubs Anthony Rizzo jersey. Thank you so much for coming. And you brought your daughter, who's a big. Oh, wow. Geez. Yeah. Wow. She's beautiful. <laughs> and she had. She, I hope she's feeling better because she's showing up after the show. I hope she's feeling better, Andrew. Thank you so much. You're a fucking loyal member of the matriarch. I see that you just finally joined up. Or you just updated your pledge. I mean, you're a fucking surgeon. You could give a little more. <laughs> no. no, I'm kidding. You're, 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 what you give, what you pledge is, is much appreciated. I just want to say thank you so much for coming out to the show, Mr. Agos. That's very right, nice. Yeah, that's a Greek kid bad. And I'm yeah. sure it was a great show because you and Sal are fucking two hilarious comedians. Yeah, and we're and both who else gay. And you're both gay kids deep down. <laughs> yes. A lot of people think Sal's gay. Deep down, you guys are both gay kids. Gay kids. I'm but, embracing it. Yeah. Him and his girl are just two of the sweetest, funniest people on on and off stage, I love fucking. There's very few people I love more than Sal Volcano. He's, I like him more than you. Yeah, and you know what you could do, Sal, if you're listening, is tweet about the podcast. Give us a little help here. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, if you could just throw a fucking nice post up about us and tag us. Also, somebody else who recently is involved in our life should be should also yes. do that. Yes, <laughs> you should do that too. But I legally can't say who. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking wild, wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, what I was about to say is that drugs are, uh, guns are illegal in Mexico. They're illegal. Guns are illegal in Mexico. Right? Can you just double check on that for me? Interesante. Because drugs are illegal in Mexico. So, let it bubba's. Look at that fucking piece. Look at this piece. Yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit. El Pas. I think El Paso is one of the safest cities in, um, in Texas or something, maybe I'm. Yeah, El Paso. Is it? Is that true? Do you think? Yeah, but apparently El Paso and Laredo, like they pride themselves on the, how safe they're supposed to be. Yeah, and they, the, and everyone has a gun there. I mean, it's a gun. Texas obviously is because right on the other side of the border is all is the main cartel, one of the scariest cartels, right, right there. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's fucking strapped in Texas, so they they look at it as, hey, we're the safest. We're we're they they shine it up as like a beacon for the second amendment and shows that hey it's all about you know it's all about uh responsibility it's the shooter it's not the guns which is obviously there's a lot to be said for that because sure. there's a lot of truth to that for sure what a lot of people don't know is that in texas which is right across the border like you said you do have to have a background checked and there are laws to get the guns but then once you have the gun it's very easy to resell it you can resell it and it goes unchecked so what happens a lot is the drug cartels set up a lot of front men to legally buy the guns and then those guns are moved across the border and given to the cartels. 90% of the cartel's weapons come from America and they're traced back to legal purchases. Yeah. And they just change hands so many times. So the problem is we have, as just a nation... Uh, just a people problem. You have a lot of fucking dirtbags that will do anything for money. Well, you got look. These are it. It we. It's the same thing with Chicago. People are like look at Chicago. It's like all those guns come from Indiana. Yeah. We have big gun companies here who like to make money. How do you make money? Fucking people need guns. Yeah. Why? What makes people want to buy guns? People with illegal guns doing crime. Yeah. So it's like, it's all good for business. At the end of the day, the more guns on the street, obviously, 
legally and legally, the more guns are going to be sold. And so at the end of the day, it's about the dollar bills. And unfortunately, um, a lot of people die for that money. Well, because, we, yeah, we you see the preferred... Weapons for a lot of the cartels, they're not like 22s or hunting rifles. They are fucking AK 47s and uh, automatic weapons, um, you know, that uh, that fire a lot and spray. And, um, you know, that's what they uh, that's what they use and that's where they get them. They get them from America. So it's uh, the they put drugs into our country, we send guns down. It's like an even exchange of fucking evil. Of evil. Guns are not completely illegal in Mexico, but they're very strict gun laws. So right. they probably come here to get the guns they can't get there, and then bring them. Correct. Back. Yeah, it's it's close to it's it's very strict, right? Yeah, like the, the very strict in all Tom, of Mexico. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it is. And in Texas, it's very lenient. And um, yeah, it's the, when that's the thing, man. When you talk about like strengthening the gun laws, it's not about like taking guns away. It's about like. Amending that, right. amending that law. So it's like background check, but then you—it's illegal to resell it. That gun has to be registered every year, or every five years, or every ten years, whatever the law may be, and it has to remain in your hands and be traced. Shit like that, right? Shit like that that would stop ninety percent of those guns that end up in cartels' hands that are used for just mass murder. But I guess, you know, the American manufacturers are going, hey, man, that's outside our borders, whatever. They look the other way. They know. I get it. They all know. They all know. But it's good for business. Well, listen, that was, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode on the Sinaloa cartel. If you didn't enjoy it, go snort some coke. Let's do it again. That would be the fucking best thing you could do is get high and use some of the cartel's product while you're listening to it because it's what it is. At the end of every episode, as we always do, we read out the newest members of the of the uh, Patreon, uh, the newest members Matreon. of our Patreon. Patre- now, now we're oh, calling it Patreon, Patreon now. But if you want to join it, you got to have to go to Patreon with a P, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, and uh, join the Matreon and the matriarchy, um, and uh, yeah, and be a part of it. And at the end of every episode, we read out new members, or if you've upgraded your pledge, we also read you out again. And uh, what you get is a bonus episode of us walking, talking. You get uh, extra bonus Patreon-only episode. Uh, for the five, for the, what? Is, look, just go read the tiers. You get stuff and ask the people who are members. They fucking love it because a lot of our wildest shit we do on a Patreon. On a Patreon. And as always, I read the names and Giannis gets us the ethnicity. So Let's first up, <laughs> Anne Marie Briones. Emmy Briones, that is a Puerto Rican girl. She could be Puerto Rican. Weba, weba, weba. Lee Ross. Lee Ross? Wait. Wait. Andrew Agos. Greek. Greek. How you doing, Andrew? Murray Kirk. Murray Kirk? Black kid. He is white. Ooh. He's got now this guy Murray. has a picture up and he's got an interesting nickname that he says that we should say Jonathan Spearchucker Fletcher. Um, can we just please how many let's do six. I am Wei just reading what he wrote. I know, but I'm just saying Wei we gotta wage on Jean this fucking maniac. Wei Song Xian. Yeah. Well, Wei Song Xian. What do you think he is? There we go. Is he, he is he a black kid? He's a black kid. What? So he can say it. <laughs> he can say it, but we're not allowed to say it. But Chrissy said it anyway. He and here's another black kid, most likely because he just got one name, Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one names. We always know those black kids. Brandon Kimball. Brandon Kimball. That is a wasp. Kimball is as waspy as wasp can get. That kid definitely has a pair of penny loafers, and he doesn't wear socks. One hundred percent. Jonathan B. Bad, bad, bad. Jonathan B. Bad, bad, bad. I'm gonna go. Uh, young white teenager, and then here's who wants a, to be black. Bad. Uh, here's a girl who just gave us a message. She must have upgraded her pledge, and she looks like a piece. Diana Durazo. Ooh, Diana Durazo. We read a comment from her before. So oh. she is. Uh, let's say her ethnicity is peace. Your ethnicity is peace. Sorry, love. Next up, Gregory <laughs> Devois. Gregory Duvall, that is a French kid from New Orleans, and his parents were slave owners. Yeah. Next it up, is what it is. Next up, we have Scribber Sisms. Scribber Sisms, that is uh, Jihadi with a body's friend who also raps. Well, his last name is Scribber. Scribber? Yeah. 
Christopher Dot Scribber. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Chinese black kid. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> Tiger Woods ethnicity. K Nelson. K Nelson is white. <laughs> Courtney Marie Rude. Another honk a dong. She is honked out. Is she a pop 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 pop? She is a pop 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 pop. Cute. To you, Corey Booth. Corey Booth. Yeah, come on. Power forward for American University. That is a D1 black kid. Yeah. Corey Booth, 6'7", 210. Chris Grillo. Chris Grillo. Oh, Chris Grillo. You know who he is. I mean, you know, he's a guy who's got a cement business. Me and my brother, we took over the family's business. Yeah. You know, we grew up in Bay Ridge, but you know what yeah. I mean? Too many of the Sandys were moving in there. Yeah. Chris Grillo's going to send his message. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I just want to say thank you. You know, the podcast is great. And guess what? I won't let my daughter date nobody like that. My daughter's new boyfriend can't hand out CDs at Times Square either. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Way so <laughs> my name is Chris Grillo. I really love used podcasts. <laughs> like, used kids are really fucking wild that I like listening. But listen, all the the other part where you're not talking about who your daughter wouldn't date, you should make the whole podcast about that. She just did. Why don't you just say she needs to date a white kid? I mean, we're not fucking on the mall, eh? <laughs> Way song she ain't. Last, Chris Grillo is ain't. an Italian kid from fucking Staten Island. Last but not least, Amanda Cloninger. Wow, it's close. Wow. Cloninger. C L O N I N G E R. She is a. Cloninger. Honkadonk. Honkadonk, and she's white and looks like a piece. <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Be we, good people. We Listen. appreciate it. Oh, we, we have to make a call yep, today. Oh, we have to call fucking Chris the teacher. Let's, let's, go, let's call Chris him. Get, Shit. We'll do, let's I forgot do we have to call. See, I, Sal Volcano. Chris, Sal, I'm not sure if, if Chris the teacher is a big fan of Sal, but if he is, Sal, call the police. <laughs> let's do it. We hope you enjoyed the episode about the Simaloan cartel, Hans. Orale. Take it easy, bro. You don't hear any Mexicans talk like that in the East Coast. Yeah. What's up, Ese? That's that's down there. It's like California Mexican. Yeah, it's more California, bro. Baja California, right? Yes. Take it easy, man. Hi, can we speak to Chris the teacher? What happened? He hung up. <laughs> Should we call him back? Yeah. Let's call him back. Call him back. I mean, he probably I mean how did who else calls him Chris the teacher? Hello. Chris. Hey, what's up? Chris the teacher. It's the History Hyenas. Why would you hang up on us? This is what, your you have dream. A 16, what, do you have a 16-year-old girl in your classroom with you? <laughs> Wild. Holy shit. This is the best night of my life. What's up, boy? What's up? How you doing? Whose Why'd window you... are you Are you presently outside of with binoculars? Uh, yours, and you're not home. Well, that is absolutely true, and that's frightening. Frightening. What's up, cuz? What you doing? You're out in Long Island? You're on the island? I'm out in Long Island. We're going to go to the football awards dinner and uh, listen to actually some of your shit on uh, on the Patreon right now. You're wow, fucking great. Yeah. You're a super fan, and we love you. You're a super fan, oh. and thank you. And your twenty five dollar and your twenty five dollar contributions mean a lot. And uh, even if you kill me one day, which is probable, I just want to say thanks for being a part of the matriarchy. Yeah, here's my. Here was my. I actually met Chris. Have you met Mister? I met. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, I like Chris. Uh, he, I've met Chris too. You've met him too. Yeah. Well, well, I, yeah. Where'd you meet him? Uh, he came at another one of the shows. He was on the couch. Oh, right on. So yeah, Chris came out to see me at Governor's when I was at Governor's, and he gave me a card. Yeah, and it had some white powder in it, and it also had a twenty. <laughs> and I haven't really been the same since then, so I don't know what that white powder was. Yeah, but uh, what was it, Chris? Uh, I I take the fifth commandment. You're a little Franks and Beans, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody that's got to be a fan of you, has got to be a little Franks. Oh wow, yo, Chris has got a fucking real New York accent. Yeah, right I mean, yo, Chris is from out in the island. Chris I from mean, out in the island. People from out in the island don't really leave the island. Is that right, Chris? You can't take it out of us, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm out in Long Island right now, actually right by Jake's 58. I'm going to play a little video poker and then, uh, you know, go home to my wife and poke her. Right? Hey, <laughs> yeah. Chris, How many times has your wife left you in the last year? Oh, uh, she's just happens now, constantly, right? Um, but she'll be back soon. You know, she, where's she going? I mean, come on. I'm a, I'm a catch. Now, you're um, the, the, the parents on the board of your school, hopefully Easy. none of 
hopefully none of them listen to this podcast because how quickly would you be out of a job if you if they heard that you were a fan of the history hyenas? Or it doesn't it matter. It would be a little bit. It will be a little bit of a problem. Bang! But I think it will be worth it. So if you ever need me to come in and be the third bike, I'm willing to willing to give my job up for it. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris's teacher is trying to inch his way onto this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you, man. You're also you're a great teacher, right? You you love being a teacher because you are actually a teacher. Yes, sir. And you know exactly where I teach. I'm going to keep that off the off the airwaves. But uh, we have, me and Giannis have a little connection. Yeah, wow. from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know somebody who know who. Uh, oh yeah, who went to school where he t- where he taught. Oh yeah, we're not going to say illegal that. things that happened. We're... <laughs> No, no. <laughs> <You're a creep. laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's Chris, all jokes. I'm joking. All jokes. Anyone listening, this is on the free. This is we should for Chris the teacher. We should have put him on the Patreon. Chris the teacher is going to be a pay, uh, on the Patreon. Chris the teacher's got to come in one day. Chris yeah. the teacher's a big fan. I would say almost Chris the teacher, Rafael Deluca, and Bacacus was until you started guessing her age. <laughs> Deluca, Deluca, and it is what it is. DeLuca and CTT are uh, are big fans, and we really do appreciate it. Honestly, I know we, we fuck around with you a lot, but we it's do. really great. We do have a few new ones who are making a run for the money, though. We got a few new ones um, that are that are coming for your guys' throne, uh, especially. Let me see, what was her name? Um, she's for Rome. She's for well, yeah. You actually said she was for Rome. What was her name? You actually commented that she was for Rome on the on the Patreon because sure. she comments a lot, and now I can't find it. But um, is it, is that the one that I asked out for a Tinder date and promised you would survive it? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> what was her name? Is that Nicole? I don't Rosati? remember, but she's a piss. <laughs> what a piss. Uh, wh- who? No, I'm gonna be at the I'm gonna be at the Fat Black next week. Are you guys gonna be working? Uh, now I'm not. Yeah, Chris will be. Thank God. I. You know what? You've made you've made me be thankful. I don't work to sell her. Yes, I'll be there, Chris. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, man. Uh, thank you, brother. We appreciate it. We really do appreciate it, Chris. All jokes aside, man, we, we appreciate your support. You're always spreading the word for us. You're always commenting. You keep it fun. Uh, that's what we're all about, just having a good time. And um, we're glad to have you as a fan, man. I really appreciate it, guys. I love you. And tomorrow I'm going to go back to teaching the effects of imperialism on Africa by the Europeans. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Wild. What do you think we should do next? What do you? What, what would be your recommendation for another episode? Today we just the episode you're gonna hear that you're on right now. When it comes out, we just talked about the Sinaloa cartel and El Chapo. Oh baby, well with that trial going on, you gotta be careful what you say, fellas. Come yeah. on. Wow, Chris the teacher has a very strong Long Island accent. I did yeah. not expect that. Yeah. So when you go to class, Yo, so you you go to class, I, you just stand up and you go, "What's up, kid? What's up, class?" Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, so today's we's gonna be talking about. Hey guys, how you doing? Make no mistake, the Industrial Revolution was fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do you know anything about El Chapo? Revolution? Yeah, Fubes. Do you know anything about El Chapo so and the Sinaloa cartel? I can't. W- I I only know what I know from Narcos. Yeah, well, that's what inspired us to do it because everyone's watching Narcos. So, Chris, the teacher, we love you, brother. Once a month, we speak I to our twenty-five dollar uh, a month members. Thank you for being a member of the matriarch at twenty-five bucks a month. You are our. Cult lead. If we start a cult, you're getting a right hand man job right next to Chrissy Salmons. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll be the first to drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, man. Go luck you boy. Thank you. Victim. All right, Lace. As we know, it wasn't actually cool. What was it? The, the what was it? Was it? Flavor Aid. Flavor Aid. Yeah. Chris actually makes a good point. We probably shouldn't be saying anything about the Sinaloa cartel. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, it's, we didn't say anything. We didn't people say anything. Are... I'm actually pro the cartel. I like them. I think well, it's that's interesting. A, that's a weird thing to say too. Chris, you say weird things. I'm more scared of the cartel than the government. Yeah, but you're a handsome kid. You're a cute fucking kid. Yeah. And it's just what it is. I don't do drugs, but I may start. Cause are you gonna keep that haircut when you get into your fifties or your sixties? You gonna let it grow out? What's a, what are you gonna? I need to know what you're gonna look like when you when you Fred Flintstone out. I need to know what you look like when you're older. Yeah, it's gonna be funny. 
Yeah. <laughs> I need to see it. Yeah. I'm going to look funny too because my hair is going to thin and my nose yeah. and ears are going to keep growing and I'm just going to, I'm going to get sunspots. I'm going to look like a typical old Greek guy yeah. and yeah. Gr- old Greek guys are gross. Gross. And you're going to, you know, with age, you just start to shrink, but your head's going to stay the same. It's going to look weird. Yeah, I'm going to weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening to the pod. Go tell your friends, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys to be a part of the matriarchy and the Matreon. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, you can find out all my shows, ChristyComedy.com, Twitter, Instagram, at ChristyComedy. Yeah. GiannisPappas.net. And follow us, as always, on History Hyenas, yeah. at History Hyenas on Instagram. And go. YouTube, History Hyenas on YouTube. And History Hyenas on YouTube. I'm going to go lick a prostate. <laughs> Frank's <laughs> <beans>. <laughs>